my friend Stephen is turning his Porsche electric. Do electric cars need a gearbox? Will he need a transmission? The short answer is yes, but it's much simpler than in a petrol car. I turned some London taxis electric and I had to heavily modify the gearbox for this. In just a few minutes, I'm going to tell you why electric cars need gearboxes, how they're much simpler and why my London taxis can drive 80 miles an hour in reverse. All right, that was a fun introduction. Um, but do electric cars need gearboxes and will my friend Steve need one? First, to understand this, we need to understand how does this really work for a petrol car and why do they have gearboxes? If you've ever ridden a bicycle up a hill, you will have noticed that you can't go up the hill in a very high gear, but it's just too much work for you. But if you switch to a low gear, you can do it without a problem, right? So the petrol engine has got the same problem. It can do a lot of work for you, but it's not very good at overcoming the initial resistance to get the car moving because it's too hard. So what you can now do is you could build a massive engine that can move the car from the start without a gearbox, but it would be very heavy. You need loads of material and it would be very expensive. So you don't want to do that. It is much easier to bundle a smaller engine with a gearbox and go through separate gears. And those gears adjust the force and the speed. So you need much more force to get rolling, but the speed matters less. Once you're rolling, you need the speed, but the force matters less. Typically in a manual car, you would have five gears right and they will have a set of reductions like this so the first gear would be 14 to 1 the second gear would be 9 to 1 the third gear would be 6 to 1 the fourth gear would be 4 to 1 and the fifth gear would be three and a half to 1 so that means in the first gear one rotation of the wheels is 14 roto rotations of the motor in the third gear one rotation of the wheels the motor would need to rotate six times if you imagine a clock the hand that shows you the uh, the second that needs to go around 60 times to make a whole hour, right? It's the same kind of thing, right? So you've got the same reduction there. So how are electric cars gearbox is much simpler now? And the answer for that is they are much stronger at low speeds, so we need fewer gears to adjust. So here's a chart, right? So you can see on the uh, x-axis, you can see the uh, rotations per minute, right? And on the y-axis, you can see the, uh, the torque. Uh, torque is measured in what's called newton meters, right? So for the petrol engine, you can see at uh, you know 900 RPM or something, you've got what is that like 180 uh, 180 newton meters or something, and then it goes gradually up when you have got the maximum torque at 4,000 to 5,000 RPM, and then it kind of goes down. If you look at the electric motor, you can see this uh, straight line at the top there, right? So all the torque is immediately available, right? So even at from absolute standstill, so you've got 280 or 275, um, and all the way to about 3,000, you've got just a straight line. You've got all the talk of the world right because they're so strong uh, we typically need one gear instead of the five for a petrol car right by the way if you've got an automatic transmission there's still these gears in there like you don't do it but you can feel the car doing it um yeah but in the manual you, you do it yourself right so because the electric motors are so strong we typically only need one gear instead of five but we still need some reduction because otherwise we've got the same problem as with the petrol cars uh, we would have to build a massive electric motor and it would be heavy costly and you know wasteful so we don't do that so we still end up with a transmission and I showed you the uh, numbers before of the of the gear reductions like 14 to 1 to 6 to 1 to was it three and a half to 1 or something in an electric car you typically end up with 8 to 1 that's like some sort of magic sweet spot that they want and then you've got the uh, the torque that you need and the speed that you need all right and then I showed you um, I said my my electric taxis that you can see driving here um, they can drive 80 mile an hour in reverse so what an does that mean? So what needs to happen is you don't typically have the reduction of 14 to 1 or something. You don't have that with just two gears. You've got that with multiple gears, right? With multiple gears, they, they multiply. So you can have one like 4 to 1 reduction and another one 2 to 1 and then it multiplies 4 times 2 is then an 8 to 1 reduction, right? And what also happens is every time you switch a gear, the direction changes as well, right? What we did is we combined a front wheel drive motor with a rear wheel drive car. And to do this, uh, we had to get rid of one of the gears so and this is where the joke is coming from okay the motors are now spinning in reverse when they go forward and they spin forward when they go in reverse and the mechanical guys thought really really hard about you know how uh, this would affect the gearbox and how the oil is going to slush around in there and all that but that's kind of where my knowledge ends um, as well as this video so to recap yes electric cars do need a gearbox but you can get away with just one gear so Stephen will need a gearbox for his Porsche and H1 seems to be a 
magic number for electric gearboxes. If you want to learn more about the physics, you should look at torque, which is a rotational force. Uh, that was what we showed there in the chart with the Newton meters, and inertia, which is the natural tendency of objects at rest to stay at rest and in motion to stay in motion. Um, so you can you can look that up um, to learn more. All right, I hope this was helpful. Um, this is everything that I know about electric drivetrains and gearboxes from a mechanical side. I hope it helped someone.